Hello again. What I'd like to, to do today is just go over the contents of what I take normally uh, for an overnighter. Obviously it would change during the seasons and things like that. Uh, you know, different bits of kit and whatnot. But um, this is generally what I take just myself for a single overnighter. Um, there's a lot of sort of, not controversy, but uh, a lot of people saying that you shouldn't take this, you should take that, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I think it all depends on what you're comfortable with, what you're comfortable taking, um, how skilled you are, and how much you want to carry. Uh, there's no right or wrong amount to take. Um, it's just down to the, it, to the individual, I feel. But um, you know, there's always these people saying, oh, you should take this, take that. But um, again, like I said, it just depends on where you're going, how far you're carrying it, your skill set, your physical fitness, and things like that. So there's no right or wrong uh, content or amount or weight. It's just what the uh, the individual feels comfortable with. So as you can see on the front there, just down below there, there's like a little belt kit that I would normally wear as well, and the bag itself. Now, before we go any further, you'll probably see a headless person. That's quite the norm nowadays, I think, on a lot of these videos, but uh, you can see on the bag itself, there's numerous bits of kit on the outside. But at this point, I feel it necessary and almost compulsory to, uh, to do this. This is my bag. This is it, you know, give it a slap. Uh, there's numerous, numerous videos where people have to, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, give it a good old wallop. So even on their pages on their side, like this, you know, things like that. So throughout the video, you'll probably see me giving it a good old kick and a slap. So as the norm, but um, let's say I'll just go over that later, the little belt kit on the front of the bag. Ooh. On top here, got a wool blanket um, in a waterproof bag. Again, you can use it for a pillow, all sorts of things, but I just sort of keep it in there. Um, on the front there, there's just like a little grain sheet, which I put down. On the bottom tied underneath there, there's like a sort of half a, uh, I think it's German, uh, poncho set, TP poncho set, just half with um, a foam silver blanket tucked in there as well. <clears throat> you can see the handle there, that's obviously a small axe. If we just turn it round, got some carabiners there, a little pouch there, consists of a compass, a torch, and a whistle. And I've just put this about through there, just to aid. With the carrying, it's not that heavy, it's about 15 16 kilos um, <clears throat> with food and water, but um, we'll go into that later. And there's obviously just a couple of bungee straps there, one under there. So if I won't, I could slide things down there as well. But um, that's the bag, and now uh, you know it's um. A Swedish LK35, I think, purchased from Military Mart. It's the, the Cordura one. You can get a canvas one, but this is a Cordura version. So, without further ado, we'll get into the back. Before we actually go into the bag, I just want to go over quickly um, sort of the belt that I take and what's on the belt. There, we just got like a a Leatherman rebar multi tool in there. Um, Maxpedition roly poly dump page. I think this is the smallest one. Um, I'm going to just sort of. Uh, put like a, a water bottle or some tinder or you know anything you find to eat, some little edibles or even if you shoot or catch a swirl or. Something like that, you know, you pair it and pop it in there. They say this is the smaller one, and uh, not a bad bit of kit to be honest. There, just have a, a, a small fire kit. Um, I will go over that 
in another video. But in there, believe it or not, there's I think there's four or five ways of affecting ignition plus tinder um, to get a fire going. On the end there, obviously, it's a Topps Brothers of Bushcraft field craft knife, um, dangler uh, sheath there, and a fire steel. So that's basically the belt that I'd be generally nine to ten I would take with me on my person. So, here we go again. So on the outside now, on the top there, just like wool blanket, all rolled up in there. And the bag you can use again, numerous things. Put that over there. So two bungee cords there, it's all just spin round. On the top is just like a bag of mixed food, um, just enough for one night really, a bit of breakfast in there. So on the front, like a small hatchet there. Sometimes it goes with me, sometimes it doesn't, depending on where. Uh, you know, if on a fire or something, that'll go with me. Again, what only goes in there as well is a pair of gloves. These weren't in there, but uh, I took these out. I used them for something else, but nine out of ten as well. Like, no, sorry, all the time they will be in there. Um, you know, using your knife, your axe around the fire, things like that. Just saves your hands, get a bit dirty, you know, and eating because you get all sorts of stuff under your fingernails in a bit, bit, bit more safety aspect when you're using your knife or your axe as well. Okay. Just a, uh, a shamar, shamag, whatever you want to call it. You know, if it gets chilly, if you want to filter some water, you make a sling, you know, numerous uh, purposes for that. And a small head buff, again, just to wear during the evening or the night. And, and you know, with myself, I've got very little hair on top, so that always comes in handy. In there, I think there's just two head torches and spare batteries, and a mosquito net. I think. Let's double check. Yeah, mosquito net head net in there. head torch, uh, second head torch, okay, just in case one fails or the batteries run out, I've also got a, a backup one there, of course obviously they've stayed a little dry bag as well. Um, cup and a bottle, obviously water bottle. Things like that. Part of the uh, that could be used as a small cook kit, which will bring me on to the actual cook kit itself. Obviously, you know, these are very uh, popular. These zebra cans, and they're very, very good. So they're in there, I think it's the smaller one, the ten or the twelve. Not quite sure. Obviously, it's got like a small brew kit in there. Um, Bandana, I think there's some purification tablets as well, things like that in there. You know, the basic brew kit. Um, more of a luxury item, just a small inflatable pillow. Again, you know, I, it doesn't weigh much, it doesn't take up much room. I could possibly use the dry bag from the wool blanket, but um, there's room in there, so a bit of comfort always helps. Um, just on the way of sort of comfort and things in your bag, Sort of you, you hear things and see things in they say as a general rule of thumb they say um, that your bag should consist of between 60 and 70 percent of your shelter and bed kit um, I agree with that because a good night's sleep is the best medicine you know um, it keeps you warm keeps you dry um, so 
at the least, say 60-70% of your kit should contain your shelter, your bedding, things like that. Which I'll say I agree with to a certain degree because a good night's sleep, if you're not comfortable, you're not going to get very much sleep and could affect you in the long term. So a good night's sleep is part of it. Sorry, I just chucked that away. Just a good hank of paracord there, always comes in handy. You know, again, numerous uses for that. Good stuff. Jungle hammock. Uh, it's a trek mates one. I'm looking to upgrade, um, obviously when time and money hello, but it does a job for the time being, okay? Didn't have to slap it that time. In there is just a military basher. It is relatively small. I've got a larger tarp um, in another kit, but this time of year, you know, the, the summer season, something small and lightweight. In there, again, sometimes it goes with me, sometimes it doesn't. It's just like um, a wash kit. Um, some hand warmers, if you could do get, again, chilly at night, you can just pop down in your blanket or your sleeping bag. And there's just like a small towel, wipes, and uh, hand gel, toothbrush, toothpaste, stuff like that generally. Again, sometimes I take it for just one night. You know, I'm not too far from the woods, so I haven't got far to go. But, um, if I was on a more extensive camp, you know, possibly two nights, then obviously, yes, definitely would go with me. First aid kit. Um, essential, in my eyes, even if I am half an hour from the woods. It doesn't matter if you come across someone injured or injure yourself, and it's quite a severe wound or cut or whatever, or burn, you've got to treat it quickly. So, a must have. Oh, there's a spare torch in there. Um, probably just to get another backup. Always good to have one. <clears throat> On the bottom there is just a Van Gogh Trek um, sleeping pad. You know, you've all seen these pads, very good. Just then do the valve, self inflates, blow it up if you need to. Like a small wool type, it's not wool, but um, polyester uh, blanket, again just in case it does get chilly, don't get it near the fire. The wool blanket is fine near the fire, but this one will go up like anything, so again just to, you know, comfort more than anything, um, sit down, if it gets too chilly, wrap around you. And that small bag there, knife fork spoon. Sport. A uh, little fold away shovel, obviously for uh, certain purposes. Again, another item that might come with me, you might not, is the folding firebox. So, if I'm having an open fire, I probably won't take it. If I want to have a, a smaller fire, be a bit more incognito or stealthy, then probably that'll go with me, or I'll probably just dig a, a Dakota fire pit. In the back there, against the back is just like a pad, sit down pad or kneeling pad. And a silky saw, a pruning saw. I use these at work, they are very, very sharp. Um, I do have a Laplander, again, that's in another pack. Um, but yeah, very sharp, slightly longer than the Laplander, which is a good thing. You probably get uh, you know, big piece of wood if need be. So that's the contents. Again, pretty basic stuff, really. Um, take what you're comfortable with, what you can carry. What you, you know, your skill set, take more, take less. You know, there's no written guidelines of what to take. I've, there is, a, 
Um, obviously, most of you know Dave Cantor's rule of uh, not rule, but his five C's. I'm a strong believer in that because, you know, that's the the minimum you should take really, the absolute minimum, um, in my eyes. Unless again, your skill set is far superior. Mine isn't, unfortunately. Um, but I get by. So, so there you go. I just uh, laid all out for you now, properly, because it's in a big pile over there, and uh, we'll show you show you the the contents. So there's the bag empty, as you can see, and obviously there are all the contents there just laid out. What would uh, obviously would be in the bag. So just to go over them again. Folding firebox, paracord, uh, fold away shovel, light, headlamps, torch, sleep mat, axe, blanket, wool blanket, hammock, sit mat, kneel mat, whatever you want to call it, basher, gloves, um, just a buff and a shamar, pillow, first aid kit, wash kit, no fork spoon, brew kit, cook kit, mortar, and a cup. Okay. So again, that's basically what I would take with me. Um, depending on the, obviously the time of year, it will change, and it does change. Um, sometimes I won't take that if I'm just going out for a few hours. Sometimes you know, take what you take what you need, take what you're comfortable with. So yeah, that's me, and. Uh, I thought I had to do this because this is the obligatory kit video that a lot of people do. Just wanted to get it out of the way, get it out there and show people what I take. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit you that hard. I'm sorry.